Hey guys, RC here, back with Starters Order 7. This is episode 5. And uh, yeah, so last episode, Amthal continues to struggle. Uh, got up to a third, but faded after looking strong early. Uh, third half, uh, we got that early win, and then hasn't raced since January. Uh, does have a little bit lower constitution bar. So we've had him on the, and we couldn't find a race last episode. So we've got a short race for him today, uh, or, you know, in today's episode, Cashmere Brown got coming off her maiden win is going to get a race as well. And Van Doesberg is looking to get off of these bad finishes. I don't know what to do here, but our big money winner, not as good as I was hoping for her. But let's get out to the track. We're going to save. And, yep. Best form, longest odds. I'm going to click go race up here just to see what happens. Don't crash. Okay. I don't know what was causing the crash and no idea. So it looks like we're on the, no, we're not on the rail. We're starting third. We break well break very well out to the lead by nose settle in with the lead and then start to pull away open up a length lead and get into the rail seven furlongs to go close pack yeah i don't like riding as a front runner like this i think i prefer a stalker King Taurus has moved up at the three furlong pole. They are within a half a length and narrowing. Nobody's falling too far off the pace. Even Eternal Beauty is right there. Sea Isle's making a run, closing the ranks up on the flanks of King Taurus. And Van Doesburg, a length and a half, two lengths. Is he going to have enough? It doesn't look like it because those two horses just blow past him like he's not even moving. Snow Hill's coming on as well. It's like we have no oomph at the finish. No oomph at the finish at all. We finished fourth, led to just inside, and faded, finishing three quarters of a length back from third position. Sea Isle won by a length and a half, and Snow Hill was three and a quarter lengths further back. Ridden as a front runner, we can never get into the race. Okay, I don't know why. That's the problem. I, I, don't, I don't know the nuances of the game to know what to do at this point. I, I honestly have no idea. Um... So I'm hoping somebody out there does that can kind of educate me. But don't just tell me. I need to understand the why. So don't say run a six instead of a five furlong. Tell me why. What are you looking at to make you make that decision? So then I can go, okay, if I do this, then you know I need to I need to get that information into my brain, right? Do we need anything out here? No, we've got everything. We're on high feed. We've raised everything up to high. So I don't need to do anything there. Ugh, man. All right, let's skip today. The next big sale is the yearlings at the end of April. So we've got plenty of time. All right, we're going to get up to April 16th for third half. And let's check Amthal, fit and ready to race. I have also looked at this condition bar. I, I posted over on the Reddit asking exactly what they were looking at. But I've had my head lad tell me they were fit when the red bar was higher than the green bar. And as you just saw, he said this horse is fit and ready to race when the green barn bar is higher than the red bar. So I don't know. No idea. Now we don't have we don't have a great constitution here. I am contemplating. Yeah, I'm gonna make a note here. Um I wish they had notes 
on the horse. But we are going to keep... You know what? We're going to do a science experiment. So, supposedly... Supposedly... I hope this works, but... You can see when we mouse over out to grass, it says cannot be, this is for the rest of the season. I did read a comment in Sophie's list uh, that this is no longer the case in starters orders seven. Let's do that. Uh, it does not look like I can bring her back unless I have to wait a day, I don't know. All right, well anyway, let's get back here. And we'll go check on her again. I want to see if we can actually bring her back. If not, then I'll let Sophie know so she can update her uh, her, her form. All right, uh, let's save. Third half. Won its first maiden, then finished fourth, fading out. We're going over to South Africa today at Turfetine. And third half is our entry, not the favorite. which is all right. There we are. Hippodrome. Carrying equal weight. We're right up there with the leaders. Riding a right-hand turn course. That'll be interesting. American horses don't do that. Oh, we broke horribly. Went right to the rear. Ducked inside. Found the lane to get back through. That was good. Good riding by the jockey to overcome that poor start. Got back on the leaders. All right. They're all running about neck and neck. We're right in there, the top four. We separate with the top three. Coming up to the two furlong pole, we're third but fading. Hippodrome passes us up. Byrony is on the in outside of us, overtakes us as well. The one furlong, and we are fifth and not looking good i don't know where we're at we're off camera all right making a run we're making a challenge on gray pearl and we finish fourth we're not going to get any money out of that that's too bad one two three actually we may have made 2500 bucks Mid division early, mid division halfway, not quicken. I don't know what not quicken means. Got the distance, but struggled in the class. So class two, not our wheelhouse for this horse. And we knew coming into this season, I mean, we're still early in our racing experience, right? So we're still building the stable, trying to get money in coming in. And, you know, we're still building, we're still building, you know, we're not going to get a great horse right out of the gate. And uh, so, you know, we knew this was not going to be a lot of fun here in the early going, right? All right, let's skip to tomorrow. We'll save that. We will go race with Cashmere Brown coming off her maiden win. Finally got that monkey off her back. And we are middle of the pack for form, carrying the top weight with everybody. And we have the, yeah, we've got a couple of 90, a 90 and a 98. Queen's favorite is the 98. They're the favorites. <clears throat> Let's see. We're riding in the middle of the pack here. Looks like we break well out to an early lead, but then he reins her in a little bit. Settles to the middle of the pack, drops to the back tier. This is a short race, man. Don't, uh, hello. <laughs> All right, there's making a move. Two and a half furlongs. He's in and out, man. He's riding really rough. He doesn't have anybody pushing him, but he's drifting. That is not a good ride, I don't think, by the jockey. All right, the, our horse and the number eight horse, Queen's Favorite, are making the charge. We pull away from Queen's Favorite inside a half mile to go, or half furlong, and we drift. Uh, we finish second, 
But man, we had a nice burst there. Queen's favorite is the one that I was really worried about. And we ended up pulling away nicely. So that was good. $6,600. Stayed on well. One and a quarter lengths back. Could have settled better, but got the distance well. All right, well, that's reassuring. All right, let us, I want to skip ahead just a couple of days. All right, let's go to our field. You, and there is no option. No option to bring this horse back. All right, well, we'll call that busted. We're doing the old Mythbusters thing. I want to take a picture of this screen so I can upload it for Sophie. And she can tell me what I'm doing wrong. So she's not training now either because I don't think when they go out to the field, I don't think they do anything. So that's, that's disappointing. All right. I am going to go ahead and get to the uh, the next auction that I want, which is the yearling. And we will get to, let's see, Cashmere just raced on the 18th. Third half was on the 16th. And Van Doesburg was on March 24th. Maybe we can book him a race. Horses raring to go. Very high constitution. And we have been running these class threes. So I don't think the class, we're not going to be a class horse for sure. So we, I think we do want to settle in at the mile. I think the mile or mile one is fine. There's 14 mile races. There is our late declaration cutoff. So class one, class two. Bold ruler. Hey, you know who that is, right? Secretariat's sire. Nice. Class one, grade three, class two, class three. We've been running the class three handicaps. So what's the difference between a handicap and an allowance? Because we can't, I mean, there's nothing to go to from a class three as far as I can tell. Your class four, and tell me if I'm wrong, but a class four is your maiden. And if you're not running maidens, then there's no other class four races. So then you're into the... Class 1, Class 2, Class 3. And we're already saying that we're being outclassed at this level. So we can't go back and run maiden races. So the only other thing is selling races and allowance races. And if that's the case, then I guess let's go ahead and throw him into this Class 1 allowance. And then we can try a Class 2 or Class 3 just to see what happens. Now see, I have no idea why it puts you in at certain points. Does that mean we're the favorite right out of the gate? Or does that just mean we're carrying the most weight? We're carrying the most weight, but we're not the highest rated horse. That's weird. So what, what triggers that? Let's see, Contreras, and then we have Espinosa. All right, so Espinosa's weight is 119. Contreras, don't see him. Maybe because he's not available. That could be why. I'm going to sort. All right, so we want S, S Contreras, nope. In Espinosa, that's our guy. M. Giroux, he's not there. 
G. Pizarro. He's not there. So they must come out after they're picked. But I, I don't know. I have no idea how to interpret half of this data. <laughs> just I just don't. I claim ignorance, man. I claim ignorance. All right, third half. He just raced. So we're still a little ways from him running again. Maybe we'll wait till, uh, well, let's see, his constitution, right, he's got the short one, so we're going to hold off on him. Kashmir has a good constitution, all right, but he is jaded, so we'll wait. We'll wait, and we will get to, I'm going to go do the yearling sale, so I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, got some information for you. So let's do the information first before I forget. So racing stable. Let's look at Van Doesburg. All right, so when I was talking about the information that I had been given that it was the red constitution bar, it is not. It is the condition bar. She just wrote the wrong thing. So basically, the green bar will go down over time. But the red bar will go down when you race, and you don't want to race again until it's all the way back up to the top, or as close to the top as it can be. So um, that is something I need to start doing a better job looking at. Now, this condition bar, you can see it's at, you know, what, 90 per 90%. So, you know, I think if you're there, but I want to pay a little more attention in the next race or two to how much that bar goes down and then how long it takes to come back up and then how that's jibing with what the head lad is telling us about the horse. So new information for us and new information is always good. Uh, I have asked uh, about the, uh, the, the field thing because there's no way to pull that horse back that I can tell. I don't see any way to do that. So uh, anyway, that that must be an error that that is still in effect. Or if it had been taken out of starters order seven, it's evidently been put back in. So FYI to you guys, if you try that. Taking a look at our breeding, we did pick up uh, a couple more breeding mares. Uh, so let's see, these are going to be couple of our our couple of our top horses so we've got Colcon a five-year-old she does have uh, some wins a lot of second places and third places so let's see we've got our maiden win here a class one grade three win class one grade three finished third class one grade three win class one grade two finished second a class one grade one second, class one grade one second, grade one third, grade one victory. Didn't do well there. Seven out of 17. I mean, you know, you could, I, I think these big fields, you could probably go, eh, maybe they got bumped, maybe they got trapped. You know, a lot of things can happen in a big field. And then the Hong Kong Mile, uh, another grade one finished third. So got some money, has been a winner. You know, it's been at least well in the, in what it's been doing. And we don't have a group winner. Or, yeah, we don't have a group winner, but, you know, I think she's got some promise. So let's go ahead. I'm going to breed her. And she's at a mile Tell you what, I'm gonna drop the scratch here, man. Cabinet minister, please. All right, lost link, seven year old. Mm. All right, nothing great there. Solid potential rating, but how has she done race wise? 
she won a grade one. Let's see. So she did not. She, she only ran one maiden and did not finish. I don't know if she got hurt. Grade three finished third. Grade one finished third. Won a grade one. Finished second in a grade one. And then started tailing off in the grade ones. And that's where she probably got bumped out to full. Now, very long distance, a mile and a half. Uh, I am not going to pay that much money. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take uh, Sovereign Debt, who's a seven furlong, a little bit shorter. That'll cut in, but maybe give some more speed into her stamina, maybe. I like it. And then Spatham Rose. Very good extra speed, consistency. Mm, I don't like the enthusiasm. Don't like the enthusiasm, but maybe we can breed that out. I don't know. Um, she does like a slower track. So let's try to do one with maybe a firm track. We'll do that. And then these are the uh, the last, let's see, Maclet. So Muletta all the way up through Sharpsville. Uh, we pay, and I could have, you, you probably seen, I forget to scroll down a lot. This was one of those sales that had, I had to scroll down like twice. It had a lot of horses. I probably could have bought 10 or 15 more, um, but I didn't. So that is what it is. Wow, he's got, look at the stamina on that son of a gun. That's a one-year-old filly, and it's got like eight-mile stam. I mean, that's crazy. Wow. And you got to forgive me when I lean in. I just can't see that. I wish there was, I wish there was a way I could blow that up, but, oh, that's horrific. If there's a mod out there that will, like, enlarge this to, like, you know, like half, like, you know, the whole screen here, because I think that's doable. But look at the stam on that horse. Holy cow. Not much potential. Some extra speed. That was interesting. All Shikar. That's a little, yeah, it's a little low, but not horrible. Consistency's low. That might not be a good one. Patty's Dancer. I don't see the potential. And remember that, you know, from what I've read and heard, looking at their ratings as a one-year-old gives you a better indicator as to what they'll be as a three-year-old because they tend to drop some, something along those lines. Right, nothing fancy there. All right, very good constitution. Extra speed ratings at 75. Confidence is high. A little low cruising burst. <clears throat> but again, you don't get that a lot. You don't get horses with high cruising burst. I have seen that. Good enthusiasm, consistency. That's a possibility. Ability. No, we're going to get rid of that one. We'll get rid of that one. Okay. Already over 50 in potential. This is one that could get up possibly over 75 into the 80 range. That could, that, oh, that could be a really good horse. It's got cruising burst. It's got extra speed. Not great, but I like that horse. I like that one. And yeah, I don't see. Yeah, there's some things to like up here, but I think we lose a little bit down here. So there's a couple in there. I'm really interested in Malial. But uh, all right, so we've got some that are breeding currently. We do have a couple of races coming up to end this episode. 
The next breeder sale is in June. So we can do both of these races. We'll save that. And we are going to go out. Let's see. We are not the favorite. All right. A five horse field. We are carrying by far the most weight. A one mile allowance. So Van Dilsberg had a solid two year old season. Maybe or maybe not. I over raced him. I don't know. Oh, you know what? I need, I keep forgetting to look at this. Coping well, very fit, primed to go. All right, well, that's good. All right, well, let's go race. We look like we're second from the rail. Clean break. Out with the leader. Everybody's pretty tight there. We get to the rail, so that's good. We're out to the lead on the rail. Number two is back from the brink. I think that's the favorite. I really don't like being a front runner, but, you know, if we had the speed and stamina. All right, back from the brink. Oh, we fight back there. Now we start to lose it. Who's that? Because we can is making a run. We are fading on the rail. Everybody else is starting to make their charge at the inside the two furlong and we have drifted to the back of the pack and i think we have a uh a horse that is no more good i think we have uh either we've ruined this horse or it doesn't help that i have no idea what i'm doing <laughs> it has you know nothing Led early, disputed, and weakened. And this was, all right, so maybe we need to go to a shorter race. Ridden is a front runner, had no choice, uh, chance out there. Do we? I mean, Stamwise says he can run a mile. All right, well, maybe, but he has a low distance adaptability. He's bred at a mile two. Do we maybe? Oh, real quick. All right, so I did. I forgot to look and see what it was before the race. All right, but you can see the green definitely went down, I think. So we have to wait for that. But the head lad is saying he's jaded. All right. Let's get to May 31st. All right. Third half. Let's check him. All right. So he's at he's right at the 90% line. I, I just want to make sure we're looking fit and ready to race. All right. Skip the day to get there save go race all right we are favored here nobody else has any form they're all carrying equal weight so this is basically a maiden race for these horses right um you know what i'm gonna put a max win bet on him just to do it the tipsters like us very oh my god can i pull that bet back agitated and sweating no i don't like that don't like that at all that does that is not a good sign we are on the outside looks like he started a little slow but he gets out to the lead Looks like he's going to try to cut over to the rail. Probably a smart ride by the jockey there. Not sure going to the lead was the right thing, but to get to get to inside to shorten the trip, right? All right, we do have a charger here, the number one horse, Northbrook. Number three, skillful running with us. We still hold the lead by a length and a half. Two furlong pole. 
pulling away now. That's that's good. That's reassuring to see, but it might be a little early. Northbrook is still there. I, yeah, he's starting to make up some ground. Four tenths of a furlong to go. And we hold on by a length at the wire. All right. Well, we get a win. That's good. Oh. We also bet money. We got 86,000 in profit. Very nice. And we picked up 60,000 in prize money. That's even better. So that was a winning day. That probably paid for the plane trip to get here. Ren is a stalker. What a horse. Ideal trip. Okay. That's good. So there's a nice win by third half. Puts him up to 89,000. He is our new high earning horse overtaking Van Doesburg. Now, let's check him out. All right, so his condition did not fall. It was about 90%. And you know, I did not make a note of the green line. So maybe we need to do that. But that'll have to wait till next episode because we're going to end this here. So where are we going next? I do have a breeder and a yearling sale. I will probably... I'll probably go ahead and go to the breeder sale right now, do that, not schedule any races, and then I will see what races we can do possibly in July, and then that gives us a month off for all of our horses. You know, I want to try to be a little realistic, and I get it. Three winner, winners from 15 runners, very nice. He's got a group three win. Can't be upset with that. <laughs> Can't be upset at that at all. A couple of group three winners, so that's good. Kashmir Brown, first and second. She's in the money, so that's positive. But, uh, yeah, so that's what we'll work on. Uh, I do want to pay a little more attention if I can remember to do it with the uh, that condition bar and how much the green one and the red one are dropping. Uh, I want to see, in fact, I'm going to go make a note right now as to where their, uh, their lines are, how long it takes to recover, things of that nature. So I think I need to open an Excel spreadsheet, start keeping a graph of uh, different stuff for some of these horses uh, to try to start learning a little bit. But anyway, guys, hit the like button, subscribe if you like what you're seeing, much appreciated. And hey, we'll see you out here trackside in the next episode. Take care. Bye.